you really wanted to make the sacrifice, you would bring your first son or daughter to Moloch, and you would be the one that was honored in front of the whole village to bring your son. And if the music, and it's absolutely right, he says the pounding of the drums and the flutes, they would play this erotic music because all of these fertility gods were very erotic sexual rites, almost like they would be considered uh, sacraments to them in a way. And they'd be out there dancing, doing all these erotic things with the music playing and the pipes and the drums pounding, and then the lucky parents would bring their child up and they would lay them in the hands of Moloch, which are now red hot, and all you would hear is as he hits it like a steak on a grill. And the baby screams, but you don't hear it because of the drums that Father Pavone told me about. And then you give the baby a push and he rolls down the arms into the belly of Moloch and the parents step back with the priest, the pagan priest, and say, oh God, Moloch, we have now given you our best. We pray that you will give us your reins and make us rich and make us profitable this year. Disgusting, right? And yet in America, we don't realize it, but we in America still worship the god Moloch. The only thing is we've changed his name to abortion. And now Americans are willing to bring their children to the altars of prosperity, the fertility gods. It says now that I get rid of this baby, I can be wealthier. I don't have the inconvenience of a child and the cost of another college education. And it's all about prosperity and selfishness. And we give our babies to the god Moloch too. This is why I say that paganism of old, we are now going right back into that paganism. We just changed a few names and we made it look a little more sophisticated. But don't ever kid yourself, we're going right back into the same paganism that we crawled out of 1700 or more years ago. We'll start with this table here. You, you're first. No. No. Oh, you're some of those stubborn kind that we dealt with last week there in, in Naples. We know how to deal with you folks. I'm going to give you a blue light special, one time off. <coughs> I'm going to allow you to come up with your fingers crossed. You don't even have to believe it. Put your fingers behind your back, have them crossed, come up and burn incense, cross your fingers and go back and sit down. Nobody is going to care if you really believe it or not. You just need to do it. Well, now maybe some of you get up and say, you know what? I have to be responsible. I have a grandchildren at home. I have a business at home. I can't be irresponsible with my life. And maybe some will get up and start coming forward here. I'll go to confession on Saturday. <laughs> maybe it's Father Pavone that stands up and says, whoa, 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 wait, 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 before you make that decision. Remember that Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father who is in heaven. And it says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his own soul? Are you sure you want to go up and burn incense to the pagan gods, which behind that pagan god is a demon? And now you all go back and sit down. And you are going to defy me, the centurion. So I say, okay, Brutus, get in there, Brutus. And in walks a 300-pound executioner with a ring in his nose and tattoos all over his body. And he sets up a big stone block. He carries it in. It's 300 pounds. He's not worried about that. He drops it on the ground. He pulls out his 100-pound sword. And now all of you have a decision to make. In the next five minutes, you will make a decision whether you are going to get in line here to worship Zeus or you are going to have your head cut off over there. It is no longer up to you. You have only those two choices and you have five minutes to make the choice. Now get out of your seat and get up here. I don't mean to scare the kids. <laughs> now I ask you, think for just a moment. In the quietness of your heart, what line would you actually get into right now? Could you go get in the line where you're going to lose your head in the next five minutes? Or would you compromise for your own safety and come and burn incense and hope you could deal with the issue later? This is what the early Christians faced. This was a daily reality for the first Christians in the Roman Empire. And the After my talk and dinner, everybody loaded up on the bus and went back to St. Peter's at night. And there was a special pro-life 
candle vigil in St. Peter's Square. Very well attended and beautiful. Uh, everybody got back home, went to bed, and getting ready for Mass with the Pope in the morning.